hello students welcome to my channel agricultural engineering with continuation of the video lecture series informationary in this video lecture we will discuss about methods and principles for measurement of force torque power speed etc of farm machinery and implements for smart design and better management of machinery force and uh, stress is the primary component needs to be determined for following purposes weighing of an object vehicles dynamics control applications such as ropes design rollover protection system in tractor materials behavior under different types of loads vibration studies in monitoring of earthquake or seismology basically these are the purposes through which for which we need to uh, measure force or stress how to uh, measure the force generally force can be measured by measuring strain of a member tool or section by different methods first of all we take an example of a simple beam or uh, which is fixed at one end and having an free end at the other so when a force let it f is applied at a free end having a distance of l from the fixed end then due to this force there will be a bending moment in the uh, the member or the uh, beam let us see the l is the length then the bending moment will be equal to f into l so that can be there is a relationship between the strain developed in due to the bending or bending strain can be uh, calculated as sigma is the stress or bending stress divided by e is the young's modulus of rigidity of the material of the beam and m is the bending moment in this case fl and z is the cross section section modulus of the cross section which having the moment of inertia i and y is the distance of the straining surface from the neutral plane of the beam or tool therefore it can be also summarized at f into l divided by ze in this case if l and z and e are almost constant for a particular cross section of the beam then we can summarize it is k into f k is the constant that k since this strain is directly proportional to the k which is the property of the beam and f is the applied force also we can uh, find the force by knowing the deflection and knowing the k or constant so that, that constant can be calculated is from the uh, property of the material and the cross sectional area or i in this case let us see there is a rectangular cross section of having width b and depth h then the moment of inertia is b h q by 12 and k will be equal to 3 e i by l q e is the moment of uh, young's modulus of rigidity another example we can take by having a just like uh, circular bar which is subjected to a force f at the free end and having a area cross section area let it a then there will be strain developed in the bar that can be calculated by knowing the constant having a e by l l is the length of the bar in this case similar the uh, deflection and the strain can be interrelated in this case and also in the probing ring where actually a ring having a diameter mean diameter of d and uh, when force are applied on the uh, two ends or uh, opposite to each other then th we can find out the deflection due to this force which can be recorded by a uh, dial gauge spring or any type of uh, sensor so this force can be calculated by knowing the deflection or reading in the dial gauge so that force uh, is directly proportional to the constant that is 16 divided by pi by 2 minus 4 by pi ei by dq d is the diameter of the ring in this way we can find out the force uh, which can be attached to any member or where actually force needs to be calculated coming to the another system by of calculating the force is the strain gauge uh, strain gauges are generally uh, mounted uh, in a hotstone bridge and they are mounted on the section where actually the force needs to be find out so for example we will take same example of the uh, beam where actually it is subjected to a force f at a distance of l from the fixed end due to this force there will be strain so this strain can be uh, calculated by using the hoisting bridge by using the strain gauge 
So let us see this is the Hudson Bridge where actually there are number of registers are there for uh, number of resistance which is called the strain gauge. So let us see these strain gauges are mounted at the uh, section or the point where actually maximum strain is uh, generally encountered. In this case this is a strain gauge like this there are num uh, the resistance uh, wire is having a very long wire which are actually folded into manifold and they are uh, arranged in such a way that if this is attached to any section and there will be strain due to the uh, flexing or compression on this uh, member. So these strain gauges, number of strain gauges are mounted. Let us see in the Whitson Bridge R1 is the uh, strain gauge 1, strain gauge 2, strain gauge 3 and strain gauge 4 that is R1, R2, R3 and R4. They are connected together and if they are attached to the member which are subjected to tension and compression or strain then uh, this strain gauge is uh, given a potential source of E let it be then there will be uh, the change in resistance due to the uh, uh, strain in the member due to the electrical uh, resistance then there will be G into E where actually G is the gauge factor around 2 for the conductive gauges. And uh, coming to this uh, point where actually the strain gauges are uh, mounted or fixed at, uh, with a special uh, technique. So let us see there are top end and bottom end of the beam. The top end there are two strain gauges are uh, attached and bottom and there are another two which are there in uh, uh, actually in the Houston bridge they are uh, opposite to each other. Let us see R1 and R3 which are opposite so they should be connected at same side either either uh, the compression side or tension side. In this case lady this is the tension and this is compression side because uh, due to bending tension will be happening there. So in this case let us R1 and uh, R3 they are connected to the tension side and R2 and R4 are connected to the uh, compression side. Therefore the change in voltage or uh, you can say differential potential reading in the strain gauge, uh, the Houston bridge will be in the in between, uh, there will be equal to G into E by 4 into epsilon 1 minus minus of epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 minus epsilon of uh, minus of minus epsilon 4. So these are the strain, uh, strains produced at the, uh, at the due to this strain gauge. Uh, why mine, uh, that is uh, epsilon 1 and epsilon 3 are in tension already R1 and R3 due to this because they are in tension they, therefore the strain will be positive but uh, if you say uh, minus epsilon 2 and minus epsilon 4 are in compression so therefore there will be due to that the uh, resistance will be reduced. Therefore the summation of resist, uh, strain, strain produced in the or uh, you can say electrical uh, resist, uh, strain uh, then into uh, the applied uh, potential into G divided by 4. So in this case E is the applied potential. Uh, the change in potential will be equal to G into applied potential divided by 4 into summation of all the strains. So now if it is it will be called it full bridge if all the four gauges are alive or they are connected in the, uh, at the, at the uh, uh, any surface which is subjected to tension or compression which gives the full sensitivity and which can be called as half bridge if only two gauges are alive which is called as half sensitive and uh, also it, uh, if there is only one gauge is live then it is called as one fourth sensitivity. So therefore the readings or the potential reading in the Whitson bridge will be less if it is a uh, one gauge is alive or quarter bridge. So this is about the uh, Whitson bridge or by using the strain gauge we can calculate the force. Uh, of any member which is subjected to either compression or tension. Coming to measurement of force, torque and force, generally torque is measured for the measurement of brake power of an engine, for the measurement of torque produced by an electric motor, studies on a structural member under torsion so that the structural member can be designed properly due to some bending or torsion. Power measurement is needed for the measurement of brake horsepower of an engine or the measurement of power produced by an electric generator. Coming to the dynamometer, dynamometer is a device used for measuring the torque and brake power required to operate driven machines. 
there, there are two types of dynamometers power adjustment dynamometer actually it measures the power or torque and also absorbs the power through the process due to the absorption of power lot of heat is generated therefore the heat heat needs to be dissipated through a proper cooling system the examples are chronic brake dynamometer roof brake dynamometer eddy current dynamometer and hydraulic dynamometer and in power transmission dynamometer generally during the measurement of power it also transmits the load to the cup which is coupled to the engine it is also called as the torque meters coming to the chronic brake dynamometer under the absorption type dynamometer so here actually generally uh, wrapping of a cord or belt or brake block around the output shaft which is fixed to the fly wheel or pulley in this case if you see this is the brake block and this is the fly wheel and there is a, a weight which is attached uh, at a distance of l from the center of the pulley which is called as torque arm so this weight is used to keep the torque arm at a substantial uh, position so that the uh, resistance force which is developed at the uh, fly wheel due to this uh, torque or power can be measured generally let us see f is the frictional resistance between block and pulley lot of heat is also generated here therefore uh, this has to be there a cooling system is there already let us see r is the radius of the fly wheel uh, over which the brake block is wrapped and uh, torque which can be calculated by finding the weight required to keep the torque arm at a uh, that, that means a balanced position therefore the torque will be equal to w or weight is required uh, and distance l that is the torque arm should be equal to the frictional force or resistance required uh, to move the engine that is the torque f into r at the, this point the peripheral will be the torque in this case if n of the uh, speed of the engine is known that is the n in rpm then brake power of the engine can be calculated by using the formula that is 2 pi nt by 60 uh, into 10 to the 3 that is 10 to the due to the uh, because uh, n in, in rpm and t is in newton meter so there will be this is what 10 to, uh, 10 to the 3 for the kilowatt so this is the formula for the chronic brake dynamometer to find out it's very simple uh, dynamometer uh, which can be used for the uh, measurement of maximum power generated by the engine coming to the roof brake dynamometer here actually uh, two or more ropes wound around the fly wheel or rim of pulley fixed digitally to the shaft of an engine upper end is fixed uh, attached to the spring balance and the and the end that is the hanging end which is uh, or lower end is of the rope is kept or in position applied with a dead weight in this case let us d is the diameter of the fly wheel and uh, small d is the diameter of the rope which is wound around the fly wheel and n is the speed of the engine in rpm and uh, s is the spring balance reading due to this uh, torque uh, which is uh, generated by the fly wheel or the engine s is the there will be some spring balance because it will try to move uh, upward uh, downward and w is the dead weight required to keep it in position if we know all these things then we can calculate the brake power which is transmitting by the engine or the uh, shaft can be calculated as pi n t 2 pi nt generally if you see here uh, 2 pi nt same same uh, is there you had a 16 to 10, 10 to the 3 here actually 2 is not there because uh, uh, torque torque will be equal to f into r so f is w minus s the differential reading between the uh, spring balance and the dead weight and uh, d plus d if you see from the center to the uh, average position of this uh, uh, roof let us see d plus d is the diameter average diameter of the uh, applied force you can say so into this is the r uh, so divided to is the r into you can say force in this case force is w minus s so therefore this two is there 
divided by 2 is there, so that is cancelled out. Therefore, uh, pi n w, w minus s into d plus d by 16 to 10 to the 3. This is the expression for the calculation of the power by the roof brake dynamometer. Coming to the eddy current dynamometer, basically it consists of a starter, electromagnet and a rotor. Uh, a disc coupled with an engine output shaft. It's a uh, eddy current is produced when rotor is rotated because of magnetic flux set up by the field current in the electromagnet. So if you see this is the field magnetic field is there. That eddy current is, should be dissipated in uh, generally it generate, generates a lot of heat and it should be cooled by some cooling liquid. Torque is measured with the help of moment arm just like the other one uh, since this one will tend to move due to the eddy current. Coming to the hydraulic dynamometer, so in the hydraulic dynamometer similar of eddy current but in this case it consists it's similar to that uh, fluid wheel. It consists of an impeller coupled to the output shaft of the engine. The impeller rotates inside the casing filled with fluid. Due to this centrifugal force developed due to the rotating of the casing, uh, rotating of the this impeller, the casing also tend to move or rotate. Therefore, its rotation is restricted by the torque arm that is supports the weight balance. So, this, this casing is little uh, flexible uh, which can tend to move and it is just attached with a uh, arm uh, having the weight balance. From there, you can calculate the torque which is generated by the uh, transmission system. Also here a lot of heat is generated since there is liquid is there. So, it is already uh, fluid type 1. So, it is just dissipated through the liquid system. We can find out also the how much heat is generated. Coming to the absorption type dynamometers, uh, first one is the belt transmission dynamometer where actually the pulleys are uh, linked to the belt passing through two uh, pulleys placed on a lever. Lever carries dead weight at the one end and balances the weight at another end. Coming to the epicyclic train type dynamometer, here you can see there is a annular gear or between the prime mover and driver driven an epicyclic gear train is placed to measure the power transmitted. A spur gear to the engine shaft which rotates in the anticlockwise direction. An angular gear is key to the engine shaft and rotates in the anticlockwise direction. So, the, through this also uh, by knowing the weight and knowing the lift uh, there is the arm or lever arm length we can calculate the power by using the torque. And also torsion dynamometer Generally, when power is transmitted through the shaft, there is a twist near the driving end by a small angle relative to the other one end. This is used to measure the power and angle of twist in the shaft. Basically like this, so by knowing the angle of uh, twist and uh, by using the personal rigidity, uh, we can calculate the uh, uh, how much torque is there. Hope you understand. Please like and subscribe to my channel.